love to explore nature. Some of my best friends are animals. <laughs> I'm Isabel Yamazaki. I love technology and inventions. Yep, I'm a geek. Hi, Giles. Hi, I'm Giles. Artificial intelligence at your service. Together, we're exploring how amazing discoveries in nature are helping us design brilliant new human inventions. New technology that will make our world a better, greener and more amazing place to live. <laughs> Today we find out which animal can help athletes cool down faster. Can't run anymore. And what creature can help us climb straight up walls, even skyscrapers. The answers will amaze you because, because they're, they're wild, wild but true. true. overheat especially when it's super hot like today that's why there are no athletes here well almost can't run anymore when your internal temperature rises your body can't cope and your muscles shut down and it takes a long time before you can start exercising again I wonder if there's a faster way for athletes to recover from overheating huh what a hot topic, Isabel. Hey, Giles. So, you're looking for technology that can help athletes cool down super fast. Well, it exists. Here's a clue. Whoa, that kind of looked like a glove. Cool. <laughs> and let me guess, it's inspired by a particular animal? Got it in one. That's your challenge. Find the animal on which to base the ultimate cooling device. I'll get Robert on the job as well. Okay, and I'll try and cool down some more. <laughs> Bye. Robert, I have a very cool mission for you. Isabel's already on the case. Awesome. Find an animal that could help pro athletes cool down fast. I'll get right on it. If there's an animal that knows a thing or two about keeping cool, it's ones that live in really hot climates. Different animals have different strategies. In the heat of the day, lots of animals go looking for shade. Many pant to cool down, and some take a dip. Check out those white rhinos. These guys are masters at beating the heat when it gets really, really hot out on the savannah. Now, they don't actually have sweat glands, so they can't sweat at all. So what they do is they'll actually roll around in the mud to keep themselves cool. Another really interesting thing is the mud actually keeps the parasites away. I'm not sure mud packs are the answer. What about wombats? These guys are Australia's bulldozers of the bush because they can dig really, really well. Whenever it gets really hot during the day, they'll go underground to keep themselves cool. These guys are awesome, but I think there's an animal that's even better at beating the heat. Check out the eastern grey kangaroos. These guys don't have any burrows to escape into. When it gets really, really hot in the middle of the day, they'll actually come to the shade of the tree, just like this really big one, so that they can keep cool. But I've noticed they also do something else. Roos sometimes seem to cover themselves in saliva. Look at that one. His arms are covered in slobber. I wonder if covering yourself in saliva might be the answer. I'm gonna go tell Isabel. Oh, hey, Robert. I think I'm onto something. I found some kangaroos and wallabies keeping cool in the shade. And I also noticed that they were slobbering all over their fur. Well, slobbery fur would definitely have a cooling effect. And I think I know how to put it to the test. So let's imagine that these chocolates are real wallabies. And I'm going to just put water or pretend slobber on this wallaby mm -hmm. and leave the other one cool. Now we're going to see if slobber really does keep you cool. 
Here you go. Thank you. All right, let's see. Well, this guy definitely didn't beat the heat. He's melted a lot. Let's check this one out. It's a lot harder. It works. <laughs> hey, Giles. I like your line of questioning. You are getting warm to hot. The process you've just demonstrated is known as evaporative cooling. As water on the surface of the skin heats up, some of the water molecules will escape the liquid and turn into a gas. That's called evaporation. And because those escaping molecules are taking their heat with them as they evaporate, the surface becomes cooler. Rather ingenious, don't you think? Maybe the wallaby holds the answer because maybe it uses spit all over its body. Well, that would mean that its whole body is one massive evaporative cooling surface. That's got to be a fast way to cool down. That's for me to know and you to find out. OK, Robert, this is a thermal image camera and it's going to help us find out whether lots of spit is the solution to keeping cool after lots of exercise. But first, we need a control. So I'm going to see what your resting thermal image looks like. All right, let's check it out. OK. So your head temperature is 33.8 degrees Celsius. Well, orange is in yellow suit you, Robert, but red's gonna look even better. Let's do some laps and heat up. <sighs> I think that should do the trick. <laughs> okay, let's take another photo. All right. Huh. All right, got it? Yeah. Let's see. Whoa, look at that. It's 35.5 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's see if spit has the cooling down factor. <sighs> no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. That's kind of you, but let's just stick to water for this experiment. OK. <laughs> oh, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> OK. Well, I definitely feel cooler now. Let's take another look. All right. There we go. Huh. You, you've sort of cooled down. There's a lot more yellow in the image, but not by much. No. And I'm pretty sure that I've spotted another problem. Well, I'm kind of drenched. So we've <laughs> certainly used a lot of water. And if you're a kangaroo or wallaby in a really hot place, then using that much spit isn't a very water-efficient option. Agreed. So they must be using a different evaporative cooling system. OK, time for another look at the wallabies and kangaroos. There must be a bit more to this evaporative cooling caper. There's a mob. Now let me see. Now it looks like those wallabies aren't spitting and drooling all over themselves, but only on their hands and wrists. Hi, Robert. You are getting warmer and warmer. Let me give you a helping hand. It is all about the kangaroos' hands and arms, where their skin is very thin. Also, they have a lot of blood vessels here, just under the surface. When it gets really hot, roos use special blood vessels to pump even more blood to their forearms. These are called arteriovenous anastomoses, or AVAs for short. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> when they lick their forearms, evaporative cooling can chill all this blood very quickly, which then returns cooler to the roos heart. Overall, lowering its body temperature. And here's one last clue. Humans have AVAs in their hands and wrists, too. Hey, Giles. I'm trying to figure out what AVAs have to do with athletes keeping cool. Ah, perhaps it's time to reveal the device I showed to you earlier. Meet the core control glove. It's designed by researchers at Stanford University in the United States. It looks so weird. How does it work? Well, why don't you ask one of the scientists who designed it, Professor Craig Heller. Hi, Professor Heller. Hi, Isabel. Your core control glove looks really cool and a bit weird. <laughs> but it's for your hand, is it? Because of the AVAs there, is that right? We know that the blood vessels in these parts of the body can carry a lot of blood and therefore can get rid of a lot of heat. But we wanted to amplify that. We wanted to make it even greater. So what we did is we put a hand in a vacuum. Now, you know what a vacuum is. It's the way you suck a liquid up through a straw. 
that's vacuum. And if you put a hand in a vacuum, then the blood vessels get bigger. And when the blood vessels get bigger, they can carry even more blood. So even more heat can be lost. Thanks so much, Professor Heller. Okay, it was great to talk with you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Isabel. Oh, hey, Robert. I've just been talking to a professor from Stanford University who designed a kind of glove. The same glove that Giles showed us at the start, which quickly cools down your entire body. So does the glove first cool down your wrists and hands? Yeah, that's right, because there's lots of AVAs in your wrists and hands. Mm. Do you remember the test that we did? Yeah. So you had a reading of 31.8 degrees Celsius. How about we go and test the AVA theory? I'm back. Okay, time to splash dunk those hands. Got it. Okay, what next? Okay, now we're gonna wait two minutes and then we're gonna see how much you've cooled down. There we go, two minutes is up. Okay, let's take a photo. All right. Okay, Got let's it. have a look. Wow, look! 28.9 degrees now. There's a lot more orange and yellow in there than there was before. By cooling my hands, it definitely dropped my temperature down a lot more in that two minutes than putting my head in the water. This really works. <laughs> High five. Well done, you two. With a helping hand from me and the scientists, you've discovered the rapid cooling secret. Cool from the inside out, not the outside in. And there's an added benefit. By cooling the blood that flows to fatigued muscles, the glove effectively resets them back to their original peak performance level. Oh, so you can train for longer and harder than ever before. A device inspired by the Macropod's clever cooling. And it's given me an idea. The Wallaby inspired the core control glove, and it's inspired me too. I'm going to use evaporative cooling to knock this training session out of the park. Wow! Imagine having to clean all those windows. Now that would have to be one of the most difficult jobs ever. And the more skyscrapers we build, the more windows we have to clean. Now, these buildings are pretty high, but there are some modern skyscrapers which are over 300 metres tall. Now, that's a lot of windows to clean. And it looks kind of dangerous too. I wonder if there's a better way to clean the windows without having to swing around on those baskets and platforms. Could we ever find a way to climb the glass and still be safe? Hey, Giles. That's a good question, Isabel. Is it possible we can develop technology that lets us climb towering skyscrapers like superheroes? Yeah, I think that's totally possible. Well, it may not be quite as crazy as it sounds, or quite so far away. Wow, that looked like some kind of a robot climbing. Your mission is to stick at it until you find the animal that can help. OK, I'll tell Robert. Bye. Hey, Robert. Hey, Isabel. We've got our mission. It's to find an animal that can help us climb walls better. Hmm, well, I know a lot of animals that can climb way better than people can. Do you have any clues? Just this. Oh, what is that? It even looks like an animal. Is it a lizard? Yeah, not sure. See what you can come up with. I'll meet you back in the lab when I find the culprit. OK, see you soon. Bye. So, an animal to help us climb better. Whoa, primates are really good climbers. And so are some arthropods. Look at those ants heading straight up that tree. Oh, that tarantula. Well, it's one thing to be able to climb a tree trunk, but I'm pretty sure that there's an animal that's even better at climbing. Oh, I know that sound. 
Wow. Have a look at this guy. It's a gecko. These guys not only climb walls, but they can also go upside down. If we're ever going to have wall climbing abilities, we'll have to mimic this guy. I'm pretty sure that the secret to this guy sticking to surfaces so well is because of his feet. It's also really cool because as he's running along, he can stick and unstick his feet really, really quickly. Oh. Nice work, Robert. Hi, Giles. I think you're scaling new heights of deduction. Geckos are remarkable. When they run, they attach and reattach their feet 30 times per second. So how do geckos stick upside down so well? I think we have to investigate it further. Hey, Robert. Have you got something that can help us out? I do. Look at this little guy. It's a gecko. Yeah, and it's all to do with his hands and his feet. Hey, mate. There you go. Oh, you can actually see his toes from here. Yeah. I wonder if their feet are sticky. Or maybe they have suction cups. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to tell. Mm. Let's investigate. All right, Robert. These are just some spare shoes that I have, and I put suction cups on them to see if the gecko has suction cups like these and walks like that. OK, be careful. much like a gecko. <laughs> I'm stuck. I can't move. The suction cups are sticking too much. I think the trick is not just to be able to stick, but to be able to unstick as well. I think we can rule out suction cups and sticky feet. Yeah, I think you're right. Back to the lab. Hey! So suction cups weren't the answer. Try these. Oh, phone books. <laughs> How retro! So, what do you want with phone books anyway? I thought you already knew all the numbers. Well, it's you two who need to learn about a basic principle of adhesion by the numbers. So first, thread those telephone books together page by page. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. This should only take a couple of months. Come on, you two. Speed it up. Here we go. All done. Very good. Now try to pull the two books apart. All right. <laughs> OK, let's go. Oh. <laughs> ah, this is really hard. Yeah, they're not coming apart. Oh. So maybe it's to do with the surfaces touching. Yeah, and the amount of contact between the surfaces that binds them together strongly? Yep. You have just experienced one of the basic rules of attraction, courtesy of Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces? Hmm. Let's have a look. Huh. So Van der Waals forces are tiny electrostatic forces that can make surfaces stick together, even though they're not sticky. So you're telling us that this is what geckos actually do? Wonderful. <laughs> Hair-like strands are called setae. They are much finer than human hair. And look even closer, and you can see that at the end of each one of these is a mass of tiny fibers called spatulae. And it would take a million of those to cover a pinhead. <laughs> the filaments are so tiny that they can exploit Van der Waals forces. This creates the adhesion enabling geckos to climb. In fact, the adhesion is so strong in theory, a gecko on the ceiling could carry a 40-kilogram knapsack. No way! Quite the contrary. It's very real. And I do believe you've got it. With such forces at their disposal, just what feats are these geckos capable of? There is one last great feat you should see. Meet Sticky Bob. He was made by researchers at Stanford University, led by Professor Mark Tukotsky, who is online. Why don't you ask him about it? Okay. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Robert. Hi, Professor. That sticky bot looks amazing. So why did you decide to make it? We were challenged um, in a project that was about having robots be able to climb vertical walls. 
And if you look at what animals can climb all kinds of walls, from rough to very smooth, even glass windows, uh, you can't do any better than the gecko. They will go at up to a meter per second climbing up a wall. We know. We've been learning all about them. So what was the secret of getting Sticky Bot to stick? One of the other interesting things about a gecko is that if you just run it over your hands, it's not sticky. It just feels kind of soft. It's only when you pull in a certain direction that it sticks. And that's essential for climbing because what you don't want is something like sticky tape, which is just sticky all the time and you have to press it on and you have to pull it off. And there's just no way you can go fast with something like that. I learned about the importance of unsticking too when I had suction cups on my shoes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Professor Kutkowski. Okay, bye Isabel, bye Robert. I think a better way of cleaning those skyscraper windows is just around the corner. All the sticky bot needs now is a back pocket with a sponge and some window cleaner. <laughs> so, just to be clear, with such strong grip, how does the gecko just switch it off so it can take a step forward? Because Giles says it can do it 30 times a second. Yeah, that's a good point. Giles? You might need to take one last look with that magnifying glass. It's a curly one. Okay. Look at the way it's moving its toes. It's like curling and splaying them at the same time. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's letting it release its grip and I suppose the Van der Waals forces. <laughs> All right, little guy, it's time for you to head off. Is it okay to put him here? You might think I should put him on a log or a tree, but this is basically where I found him. So I think he'll be pretty happy here. Thanks, little guy, for sharing your wild but true climbing abilities. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs>